Hi, uh, so my name is Stefana Broadbent. I just recently joined as an associate professor at the Department of Design. Um, I had the fortune to be here as a visiting professor in, for a couple of years. I'm a social scientist. Um, actually, I have a PhD in cognitive science from Edinburgh University. Um, but then I worked as a digital anthropologist for all of my career, be, be it professional or academic career. Uh, recently, I was lecturer in uh, digital anthropology in a department of anthropology at UCL in London. So what does an anthropologist or a social scientist do, you know, when they work with, uh, with designers? I'll give you an example. I think First of all, I think we were very successful in our relationships. Uh, we managed, I think, to infiltrate and to, uh, uh, and to contaminate, if I want to use that word, contaminate design quite deeply. I think there's hardly a project nowadays, be it in product or in service, that doesn't have some component of user research, ethnography, interview, some form of participatory design of some form. So I think that sort of combination has worked quite well. And, um, and it's been going on for quite a while now. I think, I, I think I, I, we can sort of pinpoint it to, to the 80s and 90s. I can tell you of, a, of when I started off, one of my first projects uh, in France was in a, in a very, co in very complex work environment. I was working in aviation, I was working in air traffic control, I was working with nuclear power plants. Um, with engineers and designers who were thinking of how to redesign the interface or how to digitalize some information for uh, the operators. So we would used to spend you know, hours and days and nights uh, in power plants uh, with operators in air traffic control centers, looking, understanding, observing, trying to understand how people, you know, how the operators took decisions, uh, you know, where they, they were, where they were hesitant, you know, what information they were, what they were treating, etc. Um, I remember one case in which we were trying to understand a really complex uh, process, a very remote process, and one of the operators says, when we asked him, well, you know, how do you, how do you understand, uh, you know, what's going on? How do you predict this? They said, I feel it in my nose, you know, and, and the room was, a, you know, full of computers. There was really nothing to feel there. So we were trying to understand, you know, what is it? What was in that nose? What was he, how was he reasoning? And once we tried to understand that, then we, you know, we could work with the engineers, we could work with the designers to really um, uh, design systems that were safe, that were, you know, that reduced human error. You know, we were really um, behind the idea of human factors, trying to, to make systems as safe as possible. Now, a few years later, you know, things changed quite radically because suddenly technology was all about the internet and online and then mobile phones. And there, you know, the challenges were completely different. We were, how should I say, we, the, the objective was really to make things as accessible, as interesting, as enjoyable, as empowering, as, you know, basically as inclusive as possible. We had hundreds of millions of people to bring online. And there again, I think I was super fortunate because I, I had the possibility of leading some cross-cultural teams across the world of anthropologists, of sociologists, of psychologists. And we were really trying to understand daily life, you know, how people uh, communicated, how they listened to music, how they watched TV, how they traveled, how, you know, how they stored their pictures, um, how they shared their pictures. So everything that had, you know, things that would then, you know, then we see uh, now, uh, we tend to do online. And, um, and there again, I think we, we, you know, for us it was fascinating. As social scientists, you know, the object itself was fun and interesting. We learned so much about people's lives. I think for the designers, what was interesting was to actually have a framework of understanding of, okay, if we're going to move all of this uh, in a digital form, how can we do it in a way that is natural, that is satisfactory, which is enjoyable again? Um, and again, I think we were even too successful, how should I say, when we look at the level of addiction today to our digital um, companions, maybe, you know, maybe we were too successful in that sort of uh, capability of, of transferring uh, things in a very natural way. 
And, um, and again, I think as, as far as the two professions uh, came together, um, if I think of any you know, digital company, uh, design company, agency or digital organization, I don't think there's any company at all that doesn't have a UX uh, expert, a user researcher, doesn't do some limited form of um, of ethnography and now co-design, you know, with a participatory method. So I think the marriage between the two disciplines has, has, has been really successful. Now I think we have, we're facing quite a different challenge at the moment and I think the challenge is due to the great uncertainty we're living um, in at the moment and it's an uncertainty at a very large scale, you know, we have the, the consequences of climate change, we have uh, economic uncertainty, we have a lot of social uncertainty and social unrest. So again, you know, what, what, what can we as social scientists do? Um, I think, you know, it's impossible to predict. We cannot make predictions. It doesn't, it's not serious to make predictions at this point. What we can say, however, we can say what are, in a certain sense, the uh, constraints uh, of this evolution, of this development. And I would say, well, you know, as our arms cannot move in at every possible angle, social groups and emotions cannot go in every possible direction. There's only, you know, we have taboos, we have rules, we have ways of being together and interacting. So I think what we can offer uh, in our research is really a, a sort of a, a, a set of constraints saying, well, okay, the future is uncertain, but we think, you know, it cannot go too bad in that direction or too much in that direction. Um, one area that I feel is very promising and um, I, I've managed to work in it, on it uh, for, for a while is collective intelligence. Um, just to make it simple, the best case of collective intelligence is Wikipedia, you know, with thousands of people adding to a, a, a base of knowledge. Now that we have something like, I think, four billion people online, so we've got this fantastic infrastructure, we've got uh, people who are digitally capable, even if not fully, but in part, and we've got four billion people who know how to do things, you know, they know their areas, they know they have skills, they have knowledge, etc. So the idea is how can we design systems that can bring this knowledge together um, and that can really help us solve some of the, you know, really wicked problems we have ahead of us around democracy, around governance, around climate. Um, so many problems that I think that if we bring, to, if we're capable of bringing together all of these skills, will um, will be resolved, or at least we'll get, we'll try to, to resolve. Now, I'm, I'm very lucky. Um, since I've arrived, I've been teaching and uh, and working in the in the with the product service system design, and next year with interaction design. Um, I think these are areas that, by definition, uh, are embracing complexity. You know, if you have to design a service for a new neighborhood, uh, for a new energy system, you inevitably have to take into account institutions, administration, production systems, distribution systems, cultural, behavioral change, etc. So I think again, you know, with such big, wide um, challenges, I think my role and our role as social scientists can be, you know, can be significant and we can seriously contribute. So my object is this piece of paper. You may have thought that I was cheating and a little bit I was and I said I did glance at the, the piece of paper. But what is interesting about, um, about paper and this, you know, and the fact of bringing written forms is that it represents perfectly uh, what I think uh, um, the, the real contribution of artifacts are and the design of artifacts are for human cognition. There is an approach that thinks, um, to which I subscribe fully, which is called distributed cognition. What we think, you know, people and philosophers, psychologists more and more think that this is how our cognitive system works. Actually, there's, quite, there's not that much going on up here. We really need our objects. Like I needed my memory support out here. We really need our artifacts and our objects to do part of our work. If I had to process, if I had to remember everything, if I had to reinvent everything every time I do it, it would be very, very slow. But thank God, you know, we have objects that embed cultural knowledge, historical knowledge, um, computational knowledge. So we've got all of these tools, you know, clearly the computer is the best example, but even, you know, think of uh, a measuring system. A measuring system is a very simple thing to measure, you know, uh, the distance between, you know, the, the length of a, of a table. How much 
ancient knowledge is inscribed in that. You know, there's a, the, the actual measurement, there are the numbers, there's the length, there's the material, etc. If I had to invent a measuring system every time I want to know, you know, the length of something, it would take ages. But I can take advantage because this is, my cognition is distributed between my head, which is capable of reading the numbers, etc and the object, just like my talk was distributed between my head and this piece of paper. And the piece of paper not only is a memory, but it's thanks to the fact that I wrote it down, that I could change it, change the order, find the right words. I mean, this was essential for the talk I gave. Thank you, and I really look forward to another 20 or 30 years of contamination by social scientists <laughs> onto design. <laughs>